This episode of Techzilla is sponsored by Subaru. We got a chance to interview Jordan Hubbard, the CTO of iX System and the co-founder of FreeBSD about open source software. So, co-founder of FreeBSD, some very pointed decisions made when you, when you launched it. Um, why open source? I mean, or, or can we even like, is this a two hour conversation? <laughs> yeah, it could easily be, but, but I'll try to be succinct. Um, obviously, open source is, is uh, you know, as I've often said, is, is, a, is a collaborative model for, for, for people to, you know, to, to sort of zero friction, uh, come to the table anytime sure. in any way and, and, and come talk to us and, and here's the code and you can do whatever you like. But I think that that, that kind of bears a, a couple of underlines, which is the license that you choose also mm -hmm. determines whether you can really do whatever you like. Right. And the, uh, at the time that, that the FreeBSD was launched, there was another operating system, you know, Linux, mm -hmm. and they had their own license, the, the, the GNU public license, or GPL. And we actually were kind of reactionaries to that. We, we looked at the BSD license, which was essentially, if you could summarize it, you don't rip this license off the code and claim that you wrote it, right. and otherwise do whatever the hell you want, mm -hmm. right? And so we liked that a lot. Mm -hmm. We, and a lot of us came out of the commercial world. We were professional software developers already at the time that, that FreeBSD was, was, was created. So we liked the idea of being able to take the code and mm -hmm. use it at work and also use it in our hobby and you know, any kind of uh, open source role that we might conceive of. Sure. And we knew that that could go anywhere, right? You never, you never know. Some, a lot of hobbyist projects uh, have gone pro <laughs> and, and turned into products. And, <coughs> Linux. And, yeah. <laughs> yes. And the, but there are, you know, depending on the license, there are restrictions, and you, you've even seen that with some of the Sun code and you know how the the the, the, the Sun uh, CDL influence things. So we, I, th I think, if if you could characterize the BSD community in in a, in, a, in a sentence or two, it'd be we were the hardcore folks that believed you should be able to do anything you wanted with the code, make money from it, don't make money from it, fork it, do whatever the heck you want with it. And, uh, and, and like I'm trying so hard to like, does that make you the anti stallments? Uh, yeah, yeah I, would, I, would be, I, would, I would be proud to wear that. <laughs> and he and I have had discussions on this exact topic, and I'm we do sure not see have. we do not see eye to eye, uh, at least on the, con the topic of licensing. I mean, obviously we're both open source devotees, but we have, we, we differ on how to do it. And uh, one of the early FreeBSD mission statements, which I wrote, said essentially, you know, we believe. Uh, that, uh, that open source sh should should fundamentally allow you to do anything you want with it, mm -hmm. and you know we wouldn't lie, mind a little remuneration once in a while, but we don't want any strings attached that right. that, that stipulate that. Uh, and and I think that has been actually really powerful in that you see appliances now being uh, based on BSD code, mm -hmm. like obviously you know iOS and OS 10 sure. uh, at Apple, uh, the Sony PlayStation 4, uh, a number of things where not having to worry about Encumbrances, what or lawyers are going to show up, or exactly, or, or or three-page license agreements, right. especially you know the GPL v3 is even more complex and has all sorts of anti-DRM clauses mm -hmm. in it and whatnot, and BSD actually keeps getting shorter. <laughs> we, we we ejected a clause about ten years ago, and there was much rejoicing because it got simpler and simpler. And if we if we could get it down to a sentence, and still have you know liability protection and whatnot, right. we we would be happy clams because that's that's fundamentally what we want to do. We want to make it simpler. What, I mean, you know, whether it's FreeBSD or FreeNAS, what's the biggest challenge of sort of managing and guiding an open source project? Um, I think the relationship management piece, mm -hmm. right? Keeping everybody notionally happy, even though you may not all agree on, mm -hmm. on, on the mission or how to achieve that mission. It's, it's not really a coding problem. Mm -hmm. It's a human factors problem, first and foremost. Uh, and attracting people, mm -hmm. you know, like, hey, we're, we're friendly. We won't bite your head off even as you, you, know, you, you said, you know, all d developers started out as newbies at some <laughs> point. Uh, yes, everybody does. And so not scaring those folks away uh, or finding, you know, interesting things for them to do even if they can't code, mm -hmm. uh, work on the website or do some documentation, right. you know. Or, or, we, Design we, the logo. Exactly, yeah. We welcome any contribution. <laughs> Send us pizza. <laughs> Pizza would not go uh, go unappreciated. Well, it's just, I mean, it's just amazing. I mean, basically, the internet runs on open source software that didn't exist 20 years ago. Well, yes. parts of it did, but yeah. But I, I, yeah, but I would. I think it's not hyperbole to say without open source, the internet as we know it today would not exist. Because or it would crash a lot more often. Sure. Yes. Yes. <laughs> not to point fingers in any particular direction, but yes. Yeah. And I mean, and, and being able to not reinvent the wheel. I mean, that that's right. another thing that I, I believe really strongly. And there's 
uh, you know, I, I don't remember who said it, but uh, they made a comment about how it's a sort of a tragedy that so much of, of mankind's intelligence goes to opposing other, to, to, to negating and canceling out other intelligent people. <laughs> and, and it's sort of the same thing goes for, for software. Right. Uh, you know, so much time and energy is spent reinventing wheels because those wheels were proprietary and mm -hmm. you know, I can't use yours, I better go make my own. And uh, that's just ridiculous, right? I mean, I think frankly, you know, we have better things to do and, and we, 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 have, we have artificial intelligence to create and stuff. So not being stupid is the core of free BSD? Yes, I think that would be a fine mission statement. Jordan, thank you so much. Make sure to check out our latest episode of Die Trying where we configure an updated free NAS server. This time we do it right with help from the developers that write the code. YouTube.com slash Die Trying or dietrying.com. Come join us, we like building stuff. By the way, we're starting a community over on Reddit. Ask questions, discuss episodes, and even submit articles and other texts that viewers might like. Yeah, or if you have any tips that you want to share with the entire world, we will like to try to include them in the Techzilla Bytes. Subscribe to techzilla.reddit.com. We all know the odometer means nothing when it comes to a Subaru, so I went out and found some high mileage vehicles to deck out with some custom gear for their charity loving owners. We have people involved in efforts surrounding migratory bird initiatives, inner city youth programs, and even wheelchair accessible transportation. In the series, we create a mobile office in a Subaru. We made a customized mobile camping station with stove and water pump. We even set up some amazing custom bike racks for wheelchair adaptive bikes. The life of a Subaru isn't all about the odometer. They're reliable, and that applies to more than just highway miles. Subaru vehicles are tough, Ask me how I know they can scale rocks, trek up and down mountains, and blast through snow, and a lot worse. Be sure to check out Second Chance Subaru at revision3.com Subaru.